looks like I accidentally uh, accidentally pushed a button back here somewhere anyway um, that nose gear not the steering rod I've since changed those the steering rod that comes with it they weld on they solder on a nut to attach the top end they, they solder on a, a regular hex nut onto the front end of that um, steering um, shaft for lack of a better term I don't know what that is steering uh, steering uh, shaft sounds good anyway so these the that's the weak point then because where they welded it they softened the metal and it on a hard landing it it broke or bent really badly right at the weld so I ditched that idea and I went to this just took one of the uh, the coils and laid it out flat and just uh, hooked it onto the steering shaft and then put uh, one of these collars on here uh, to maintain a height and you can drop that collar down if you want this to to run uh, down further um, but I like it it's a real sweet deal I recommend it to anybody um, Everyone knows that when you pop that front end on the on the ground, it pops the nose right up in the air on a on a rigid, or even those coil springers. They're uh, they're really super stiff and not very forgiving at all. This this is it right here, and that's a saved, <laughs> salvage saved and drilled um, uh, aluminum aluminum uh, main gear in the back there. Uh, it has been through thick and thin. I've straightened it out a few times and uh, it, it screws right underneath inside to a, uh, a block uh, a slot that I made in there and then there's a there's a supporting block inside. I, I guess I haven't shown uh, I haven't shown the inside of this much at all. Uh, I might have to do that when I get back to the house. Um, yeah, I put the uh, the high glow uh, poster board patches on the uh, right side also on the uh, rudder to indicate um, my locations or my direction rather because I, I had this up and I think I mentioned in a previous video I know I did uh, that I was away up there in the sky and uh, thought I was turning right and it was turning left it was headed the other direction uh, so then I made my correction as soon as I discovered my motion was not uh, the right input uh, the result was not the right input for the motion so here's my um, here's my pan tilt pan tilt solution uh, way down low profile and that's that's what I was after. I wanted to keep it as low as possible, and I bought from Flytron a uh, 180 uh, servo extender uh, plug and play. Um, so it comes with the uh, plugs on both ends and a little uh, circuit circuitry board in the center that uh, does all the uh, conversion for you. And uh, I get actually more than 180, um, so that's pretty sweet. Right now I can uh, like this, so that's uh, that's going to give me more than 180 degrees. That's looking right down the wing. And I like that, uh, and I, I may want to go a little bit further with it. Because uh, I like to be able to see, I like to be able to see my uh, control surfaces moving, and um, I can, I can mount the camera that I have in my hand. Or actually, I have another one. I have a JVC that, that only looks 90 degrees to the to the, uh, like out the back of a typical camera is, or, a, or or a typical uh, phone. It has a camera 90 degrees out the back of the phone, if you will. And this JVC is decent, and I did some groundwork with it recently. My daughter was holding it, and uh, um, it, it doesn't do well uh, zoomed in at all. It looks gross, in fact. Uh, that video is actually up on the website, I think, and it looks horrendous. But um, it does real well for close, so I may find a way to mount it uh, here somehow. Uh, so I can get these wingtip views uh, or from under the belly or something like that. Just something other than right out the nose with no perspective of the aircraft whatsoever. But um, anyway, um, I can go on and on. I think I had shown the... Uh, I think I had shown the uh, battery... Um, 
situation in here. Here's the front end. I think I showed that to you already. That's the front end, the tray inside. Um, I'm using the foam board, poster foam board. You can use the cheap stuff from like Big Lots, uh, 99 cent store. Actually, Big Lots doesn't have any anymore, but the 99 cents or Dollar Tree stores has these, uh, I think they're 20 by 30 sheets and they're like 99 cents each. They're real wavy and ununiform or d just all kinds of waviness to them. But they're cheap and they're good for construction like this, interior, keep it all nice and light. Uh, someone would probably build this out of plywood, but when you reinforce it right, and hot glue is of course your friend, uh, when you reinforce it right, um, it is really strong, very durable. In just a second, I'll pull this out and you'll see what I'm saying. Um, it is framework that supports all my battery. So I've got a channel that I've uh, run a pair of rails there that, that runs all the way through into the front. Here, let me disconnect the uh, aircraft real quick. Okay, so <clears throat> here's my, my main batteries for power right there and then my little 11 volt unit here on top. And I've got them together uh, all in the same place which makes, uh, makes moving about um, for adjusting CG and balance. Makes it real, real easy because you got so much weight that you're moving in such a small space. And I've got little marks here on the side, you know what I'm gonna do. And underneath here is the bottom of the tray. Uh, you can see that. And it comes out the back. And that fits up inside. This fits up in into the fuselage here. Uh, the the tube fits in there and rests on the bottom and makes contact here uh, at the bottom as well. So it's fully supported at the back end once it's up inside. And then up inside this uh, beast, the belly. Got the steering servo there. I've got a pine block here that is uh, is your my steering uh, shaft. Uh, mount to keep it nice and low run it right up through the pine and uh, I, once this gets all wobbly what I plan to do is I've got some brass tubing um, that I use uh, to make a sleeve, a metal to metal sleeve and uh, just out drill out the uh, block and through and insert that brass sleeve and it fits that shaft really nice um, but I don't usually uh, don't usually take the time to work that out. I haven't taken the time, I should say, until it starts getting real wobbly, uh, because the pine will give away with all this this pressure moving back. So the front end of this wants to move forward and uh, oblong the hole. So up inside, um, I've got both of my power cords going back. Got them tied together. Um, just various goodies back there. You can't really see a whole lot of it. And then a hole right down through the center of this, uh, I'll call it the wheelhouse. <clears throat> communication tower. Yeah, this is the comm tower right here. So we've got communication um, video, obviously. Uh, here's my uh, controller and my happy button right there that you push to uh, fine tune your CCD board. And. Um, So the tilt is done this way. And I can I can get a pretty good pretty good look down without hitting the uh, without hitting the uh, control tower. <laughs> Calm tower, sorry. So, so far I'm fairly well pleased with it. Most of this stuff has been worked out before. Um, I've got a, uh, I've got a 2.8 to 12 uh, millimeter. Let me turn this this way. 2.8 to 12 millimeter uh, uh, lens on here. And currently I have it all the way out. So the, the widest, uh, point of view um, 
do I need the zoom capability, meaning the ability to adjust? I don't know that yet. I'll work that out when I uh, get some FPV and done through it and where I'm actually flying by uh, whatever the settings are on here. And then once I get that figured out, I'll uh, know whether or not I need you to buy this. But it really wasn't, it was like 13 bucks to do this version um, versus the standard uh, 2.8 or, or 3 or whatever uh, lens. There wasn't really that much difference. Apparently it was on a sale or something like that and I took advantage of it. What I do like though is it has the, uh, the shutter um, uh, for light. So now this camera lens, a huge advantage over the simple lenses is that night flights uh, this has a point zero one lux so the amount of light it picks up is just incredible uh, so night flights I can pick up especially if there's a moonlit night dude it's like you're flying in black and white and uh, it's just crazy it'll be crazy good so I'm looking forward to that and that's probably the big huge advantage right there other than that probably none at all so I adjusted my um, I uh, pitched my motor down. I had pitched it up on the last flight and did absolutely nothing for me. I'm trying to get the nose uh, to not want to climb radically, uh, to pitch up radically when I'm powered on because um, it just wants to climb hard. Uh, and then once I pull the throttle back to half, then all of my uh, level flight settings, uh, elevator trim, uh, take effect and everything's cool, right? So, um, anyway, uh, I pitched the, pitched the prop down and it does seem to help. And the location there uh, is another concern is that I may wanna, <clears throat> so far so good, I really do notice that there's a, quite a bit of a growl uh, so the air is still pretty choppy, in other words, uh, as it's coming through the fuse there, because that's through and through. The wind goes all the way through, which is good for cooling, and was intentionally designed that way. Um, but I may want to move the motor up to like a, uh, a vertical uh, block right here, uh, a plate rather. Double up a plate on the back end there and uh, mount it high. Uh, higher above the wing so essentially the CG will stay the same but the uh, the more of the prop will be exposed to uh, um, free-flowing air smooth air or smoother air all that business up front up there will make it choppy as well anyway running on long uh, so here we go there's a little bit of that and uh, we'll catch you guys later I appreciate you guys checking it out uh, please leave comments absolutely and if you have any suggestions on uh, search uh, it was it easy to find? Was it not easy to find? Let me know. We'll just make a make a comment there, and I do appreciate the people that are subscribing. Uh, they have a bunch of good stuff out there, and uh, it's pretty cool seeing all the different uh, uh, ideas. And um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully pretty soon I'll have my on-screen display squared away. I put in an email to uh, Flytron and uh, see what he says. Uh, uh, I think his name is Melai. Melai. And uh, seems like a pretty good guy when he gets a hold of you. He's pretty straightforward, but uh, I don't know if he's going to really help me out or not. With uh, which I think is the loader stick is bad. Can't flash the uh, on screen. So there you go. All right, West out.